That wasn't me! From a comic book villain to a real-life character to just a funny gal. This is fun. I love fun. Every day I schedule 20 minutes of fun. Margot Robbie can do it all and more. You broke up with someone on Valentine's Day? Oh my gosh! Hi, I'm Joy and you're watching Asa. <laughs> if I could see my actual reflection, yes. it would have... Sure, Harley Quinn is far from being the only famous role she's played. But you can't argue that Margot's portrayal of this DC villain was particularly memorable. She's Harley freaking Quinn in the ads, but she's Harley... Gwen in the movie. Although the first Suicide Squad film was about, well, a squad of villains, she certainly stood out among them. And it wasn't only because of her beauty. Marco! Boo! It was also due to Robbie's undeniable charm. While we loved seeing her on the screen, the entire crew enjoyed working with her on the set. Oh. Marco. Marco. <laughs> yep, she's the one. Margot had a good relationship with the entire cast. With Jared Leto, for example, she had a special connection because they didn't even have to rehearse their scenes. They would just go ahead and act them out on camera straight away. <laughs> it's really scary. Here's what Margot shared about working with Leto. I'm trying not to laugh because he says such hilarious things. Jared's really funny and terrifying and just nuts. Absolutely nuts. And you might have heard that Jared had a weird habit of giving strange gifts to his Suicide Squad co-stars. He gave Margot one, too. I opened a box and there was a live snake in it. Although that may have terrified others, the actress didn't mind. She's from Australia, remember? So snakes are not a big deal for her. I had snakes, like, literally in my house growing up. What? Not on purpose. Like, by, you know, they would get into the house or whatever. Moving on to her other co-star, Margot also established a friendship with Will Smith. He'd make her laugh on the set. Oh, I'm just gonna do it. I'll do it after. What? Uh huh? Oh, you can't. Scare her once in a while. Run! Jesus. And they would also tease each other a lot. What bugs you most about me? When you say, huh? Yes. Yeah. I huh? Hate that. But of course, most of all, Margot loved working with her female colleagues. Who would you say is the most attractive member of the Suicide Squad? I'm oh. sitting next to her. No. Especially in her second Harley Quinn film titled Birds of Prey. It had a female squad of villains and for Margot, it was really special because you don't often see so many women in action movies. The last one that really resonated with me was the uh, Drew Barrymore, Karen Diaz, Lucy Liu, Charlie's Angels. Yeah, and that was quite a while ago, so it's high time to make another movie like this. But of course, not like the new Charlie's Angels film starring Kristen Stewart. Oh. Anyway, Margot had a lot of fun with her female co-stars while making Birds of Prey. Down in Gotham with the Birds of Prey, where all the bad come out to play. Yep, they even made a song about the film. Come, come see our movie, it's gonna be sick. So it's safe to say that playing Harley Quinn became quite an experience for Robbie. Life changed pretty quickly. But that doesn't mean there weren't any challenges involved. First of all, before she even stepped onto the set of Birds of Prey, Margot had to spend two and a half hours in a makeup chair. And according to her, that was quite an accomplishment because in the first Suicide Squad, her transformation would take as long as six to seven hours. You might be wondering what that's all about. Well, many things. Full body paint. Full body paint. That takes a long time. Then you've got to do multiple sealers and skin prep and blah blah blah. Then you gotta do all the tattoos, then you gotta do the wig, then you gotta do the face, and then you gotta do the continuity blood and bruises. Yeah, it's not easy being Harley Quinn. Another challenge Margot faced on the set was having to eat her character's favorite egg sandwiches. Turns out, she's allergic to eggs. There is protein in chicken egg whites that can give people migraines, and I get it, Robbie explained. But luckily the crew helped her with that and replaced chicken eggs with duck eggs. And one more challenge Margot actually created herself. See, she's into giving people tattoos. Yes, you heard that right. First I had to really beg people and then and then it kind of like, it, it um, became a thing. So after Suicide Squad, a lot of people wanted a memorable tattoo from her. But one of them didn't get what he wanted. But I was writing a word and I spelt it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> a good time to be pretty. <laughs> Apparently, Margot had to write the word squad, spelt S-K-W-A-D, but something went wrong there. I went straight from the S to the W. 
Swad? The unfortunate soul who got this tattoo, a big one across his arm, was the assistant of Jai Courtney, the actor who played Captain Boomerang. Poor guy. But at least now he's definitely never gonna forget working alongside Margot Robbie. Anyway, let's go back in the past a little bit and recall how this actress became famous. Margot's big break in Hollywood happened when she starred in The Wolf of Wall Street along with Leonardo DiCaprio and Jonah Hill. But even before then, she was already well-known in Australia due to being in a popular series, Neighbours. When I was working on Neighbours, it was like, you know, you could be across a football field and people would be like, Chick from Neighbours! Donna! And you're just like, oh my god. That's right, she knew what fame was all about. Before Robbie started working in The Wolf of Wall Street, she had to learn to speak with a Brooklyn accent. So she met with an acting coach. Okay, pretend that you've got acrylic nails on and they've just been painted so they're still wet. And I was like, okay, cool, so how do I do the accent? And she was like, just do it. Yeah, that sounds kind of weird. I was talking to her and I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to her and, you know, this attitude came out of nowhere. It worked. Being on The Wolf of Wall Street was a dream come true for Margot. If it's a dream job, it was really wonderful. Well, you can understand that, right? After all, working with Martin Scorsese and Leo DiCaprio must be an awesome experience. Later, Margot co-starred with Leo again in a Quentin Tarantino film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And she had a blast on the set with him and her other co-star, Brad Pitt. I don't know how much I'm elevating the situation, but definitely just Brad and Leo is like, people lose Trust their Trust me, you minds. elevate all situations. <laughs> Back to The Wolf of Wall Street. There was at least one challenge in the film for Margot, and that was about appearing nude on the set. But it wasn't because she was too shy. Robbie once stated that she would agree to take her clothes off in a scene if it was necessary. If it's just and the character would do it, then it should be there," the actress said. And for her character, Naomi, it was absolutely reasonable because she used her body to manipulate her husband. But the situation with nudity became awkward for Margot when she took her mom to the premiere. And she saw her. I actually tried to cover her eyes when um, the nude bits happened, um, but she pushed my hand away. She was like, oh, that'll be fine. And I was like, mm -hmm. It was probably quite a stressful situation. But after the film, her mom claimed that she actually liked the nude scenes. She said they were done very tastefully and within context. And I was like, wow. Looks like Margot's mom understands the art of film very well. At the same time, her on-screen mom in another film wasn't that understanding. I'm talking about I, Tanya, of course. Her character's mom there was not so nice to put it mildly. But in real life, Margot's relationship with Alice and Janney is great. And in fact, Robbie once revealed that she's Janney's super fan, and she'd even memorized her lines by heart when she was younger. My friends and I quote lines from Alison's character in 10 Things I Hate About You all the time. Margot also had a lot of fun with her other I, Tanya co-star, Sebastian Stan, but in another way. As the actors revealed in one of their interviews, playing the emotional scenes between Tanya and her husband was crazy. I think we kind of lost our minds sometimes on set. In one of these scenes, Sebastian even crushed part of the set. Literally. Sebastian literally destroyed the room we were shooting in. I'm not kidding. Every single wall. Yes, he just went in a winter soldier mode for a while there. Anyway, Margot obviously had to learn how to skate for the role. It wasn't too big of a deal for the actress because she played ice hockey in the past. But she still had to train a lot because figure skating is so different to hockey. And it didn't go without injuries. Bumps and bruises for sure and like the bloodiest blisters you've ever seen. But uh, then I herniated a disc in my neck. Even when her disc herniated, she couldn't stop filming because she was also a producer in the movie. But I was like, no, oh, we got to get shooting, so um, let's just keep going. Oh, and here's one more fun fact about Margot being in I, Tanya. Surprisingly, she once again had to spend quite a lot of time in the makeup chair. Sure, it wasn't hours like when she played Harley Quinn, but still, she had to change her appearance for the role. Turns out they had to put a lot of effort into turning Margot's smiling eyes into Tanya's droopier eye shape. And they also had to drag down the corners of Robbie's mouth. That's how she transformed from a beautiful, smiling lady into a troubled woman who had issues pretty much in all aspects of her life. After the movie was done, Margot quickly returned to her normal self and kept on making others laugh. She does that a lot, actually. And it looks like she has quite a relationship with Jimmy Fallon. Bundy Beach. Butter Beach. Bundy Beach. Butter Beach. Bundy Beach. Butter Beach. Bundy Beach. Bundy Beach. I'm getting worse, I know. <laughs> <laughs> she just loved playing this game with him. Turtle! Yes! Yeah, <laughs> Well, they played a lot of other games too. Like the one where they had to say the same word together. Three, two, one. Watermelon. Apple. Margot, watermelon isn't even a fruit. So they tried once again. 
Close. Three, two, one. Guava. Orange. Guava? Yep, it didn't work. Three, two, one. Stomach. Ears. Stomach? <laughs> But just when you were starting to think that they'd never managed to win this game... Types of balls! Three, two, one! Basketball! <laughs> yes! And when, once again, Margot visited Jimmy's show, she shared one funny but quite embarrassing story. You steal toilet okay, paper. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yes, you heard me right. He asked if she really stole toilet paper, and she said yes. That's one crazy story. It actually happened because Margot kept forgetting to buy toilet paper. And once she was at a hotel with her friend, she was like, I'm getting on a plane to Australia, like, so take, you know, whatever we've got left over. And I was like, oh, great. So I packed up a bag and I was like, toilet paper, yes. The actress knew that she forgot to buy it again, so she just took all the paper she could find in the room. And she went home peacefully, knowing that she finally had a few rolls. But then the weirdest thing happened. Margot's mom called her and asked if she bought something nice from Ralph Lauren. The actress couldn't understand why her mom thought she had bought something from there, and then she saw a paparazzi photo of her with a Ralph Lauren bag coming out of that dreaded hotel. The bag my friend had given me to put all my stolen goods in was a Ralph Lauren bag. And Jimmy Fallon was kind enough to show us the actual photo. Look at this guilty human being. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that expression on her face. It's priceless. Oh, and here is the last fun fact about Margot Robbie that we're going to share with you. Are you ready? She's a huge Potterhead. If you could spend the day with anyone in the world, who would that be? J.K. Rowling. Isn't that the answer any Potter fan would give to that question? I'd probably ask you like a million and 73 questions, but yeah. <laughs> oh, Margot, we get you so well. Now go ahead and watch another video we made about the cast of Margot's upcoming film, The Suicide Squad. Bye-bye, Birdie. And stay awesome.